What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today is the first part of the multiple part series of us lowering our four wheel drive first gen. Now with that being said, we are really reverse leveling this truck. So don't come at me for lowering a four wheel drive truck. But we are looking for maximum ride quality and steering quality. So if you guys have followed me for a long time, you know that my old white and gray truck went from a two and a half inch level to a four inch lift and it handled terribly. I am wanting the total opposite of that. This so as you can see, I'm cutting away and we are getting rid of this six inch factory block. I purchased a one and a half inch block from Skyjacker and it was in a little kit. And quite frankly, it was only like $40 shipped. So with that being said, I will put the link to the block kit and the U-bolts in the description easily the best part of this is the new u-bolts just because you can cut the other ones out and make this a quick job it only took me about an hour and a half to do this um as you can see right here i'm fiddling with the new block but that centering pin is actually taller or longer whatever you want to call it than the factory one so that little hole that's in the axle is not deep enough to allow it to sit flush on the axle so what I did was I just shaved about a half inch of it down and it fit right in there as it's supposed to. But the U-bolts and everything are plenty long. I kept my overload and just did both sides really. And then sucked all the U-bolts down and everything worked as it should. I'm very, very happy with how it all worked out. Clearly, as you guys can tell, we're doing this on a two-post lift. And with this truck being in the air and the axle hanging free, it requires post jacks and quite a few of them. We had three on just the rear. So, essentially, I had one to hold the pinion up so it didn't tilt down and then mess up where my blocks were going to be centered at. And then just one on each side to hold the axle up. It ended up working out pretty well, but... One thing you have to keep in mind is just keeping the axle centered so you can line it back up with the leaf springs. It is really nice to have two people on the ground. It's just fine, too. That's how I've always done it before this. Uh, you just need two jack stands under your frame rail in the back and let the axle droop. But again, it is nice having a helping hand, and I highly appreciate Brett helping me out after work on this thing, as always. <laughs> So the verdict is a one and a half inch block is too short if you do not want to mess with your front ride height. So I have a one and a half inch block with the overload and I'm sitting about two inches lower in the rear. So if you do not want to mess with your front ride height, get a three inch block and you will be able to leave everything else alone and you'll be able to keep your overload. So next I'm going to be messing with my front leaves which I'm going to get new U-bolts and then remove the front bottom leaf where that gets. I'm really about an inch and a half to two inches off, which is not hard to make up. But I will need to see if my crossover steering will fit. 
that is made for no lift, but I am going to be lowering it, so that might change things up. But you'll be able to see right here in this video, it's leaning pretty good. Unfortunately, not everything can be done to the truck in one night. Uh, it's going to take multiple nights after work and weekends to get it where I want it. And you will also see I have no turn. These are a 331250, and it does not clear at all. And it won't, definitely won't clear after I lower it more. So it'll be getting tires in the coming weeks. Unfortunately, these are nice tires, but oh well, part of it. But yeah, there she is in all her glory. And to wrap this up, it is truly all about the overall driving experience of this truck. I want to put lots of miles on it, go everywhere with all of my friends, go racing and all that. And keeping angles happy will yield for less broken parts when I'm racing as well. So my just the steering shaft angle, all the angles of the steering linkage itself, uh, the angles of the drive shafts, everything will be much happier at the height that it's at. And I am very excited because I think it'll be able to ride and drive pretty well after this. And here is a photo comparison of the front to back difference we got going on here. The top picture is a picture I took in wide angle mode, which is why the wheels look so wide. But with the rear fender flare on, that's really making it look more oh, lower in the rear than it actually is. <clears throat> so it's more about one and a half inch. But you can see I'm getting more to where I want. With that smaller tire, it's going to look a lot better. And then I'll continue with trying to make this thing look better. We'll get the wheels polished and paint corrected. Try and get all those dents out. Uh, take it to a paint shop and have some stuff fixed. Get all, get all of our trim back on. Get all of our fender flares back on. Tint the windows. You know, the whole nine. Just all the usual things. Oh, and the frame. We need to go and uh, wire wheel it and paint it and all that good stuff. But that's going to wrap up this one. Uh, hopefully you guys will join me back for the next part which will be lowering the front. And then to follow that, uh, we're going to put some helper bags for the rear for towing. We're going to do some crossover steering, Borgus and steering shaft, a blue top steering gearbox, um, all, all sorts of good stuff coming and just stuff that you guys would also want for your first gen for drivability upgrades. So until next time on this old school crew, we will see you guys later. Keep kicking it old school. Peace out.